Hey guys, how's it going? All right, so in this video, what we're doing is I've got to replace the seals, the fork seals on the DR650. Um, I'm also gonna be putting in gold emulators. Now, I just wanna let you know, there's a dog next door. It's gonna yelp and bang. I've got, there's cats, there's wild birds. So there's gonna be noises going on uh, as I'm doing this. Don't worry, everybody's okay. And sorry for the noise, but that's just the case because I'm in my backyard. All right, first thing first. So these are the uh, fork seals that I'm using. They were $35. Be putting on new dust seals. So that's them there. Now the emulators. So the emulators are Racetech. I'll show you. So gold valve cartridge emulator. And that's them there. I can't remember how much they were. I'll put a, uh, a uh, how much they are now. So race tech, and that's what it is. So you'll see down here, and that's where it is there. So that's the top of the fork, and there's a spring. So the spring sits on top of that emulator, and then this is the dampening rod. It sits on top of that, so in between there. And these emulators have the ability to, you can turn this to adjust that spring there, which then adjusts, I believe, the flow of the oil. So you can either make the fork plusher, softer, or harder, stiffer obviously to whatever you want to, whatever works best for you with how you're riding the bike. All right, let's get uh, Max, Max, the DR650, get it ready to start doing. This is gonna be step by step by a beginner me. Half an idea of what I'm doing, but I've never done it before. All right, let's get into it. All right, first step, put your, uh, your bike up on a jack stand, make sure it's all secure, and you just gotta have that front wheel hovering off the ground. All right, just to make it easy, I'm going to remove this whole section here. It's uh, three bolts, one that side, one that side, and one down there, just using a Phillips head screwdriver. Once you've got your bolts out, just basically take that off like that. Just gives us a little bit more um, access to everything. So now what we want to do is we want to loosen these bolts, which are on the top of the um, shock. Just loosen them because while it's being held here, it's a whole lot easier to loosen them there than when you've got all this out. So I'll do that now. All right, so this takes a 22 millimeter um, spanner. Oh, that's bloody hard. What we're going to do is give that a bit of a tap with this. There you go, that's just loosened that off. That's all we need to do. All right, exactly the same thing on the other side. Um, just tap that, that just makes it a whole lot easier. Beautiful. Now you might see over there, that's Matt, he's supervising me. <laughs> all right, here's a pro tip. Get, a, get your phone or a camera, take photos of things before you take them off because when you get to the end of this and you go to put it all back, there's a whole lot of times gone and your brain isn't as good as what you think it is. I know mine isn't. I've got the beauty of having this video camera. So I can see where I'll be able to go back and go, oh, that's right, the tube sat just in there like that and I can put things back and you know, bits and pieces around it. You know what I'm talking about. All right, so the next thing we've got to do is take the front wheel off. Cool, I won't show you that, you should know how to take that off. If not, just do a quick search on um, YouTube and you'll find out how to do it. It's pretty simple. All right guys, so another pro tip, I, sh I should do this. Um, when you're taking off the front, when you take out the front wheel, don't press that front brake because the calipers will close and then apparently it's really hard to pull them apart. I've never done it, but uh, so yeah, don't. Once, once that wheel's off, don't hit that front brake. Now I'll just quickly show you. To take the uh, the front wheel off, basically you just loosen these, they're 10 mil um, nuts, just loosen them. And then this thing here, that's a 19 mil socket or bolt or whatever. And then you just undo that and then pull that out. And that just comes away like that. This thing here just comes away freely. And that's it, and then you just walk this out. All right. Alright guys, so now what we're going to do is uh, get this caliper 
off this fork. So I've got to undo this bolt here, which I think is a 10 mil. Yep. So we'll basically take that off. And then we'll remove these two here, which are 12 mil um, bolts. And then this will just hang. Now, a lot of people will say, don't let it hang. I've let it hang before. Don't do as I do. I'm going to let it hang. You should tie it up somewhere and, and take the pressure off it, but I'm not going to worry about it. All right, so another, so I've got that out. Another pro tip is put these bolts back where they came from. Just let that sit in there because this is all gonna, this is going to get undone from here and taken out. But that, so I know that that bolt belongs for this bit here. Cool. All right, so for the main caliper part, let's just. Tight as tight on there. All right, we'll try this one. Whew. Well, tell you what, that doesn't sound good or feel good. It feels like you're going to break it. All right. So if you get that feeling where it's real clunky, don't worry, just do it. There you go, that's the way. So again, I'll put these bolts back in here, like that. So then I know where they belong. So I'm just going to let this hang down there like that. That's me. Alright guys, so now we're up to there. So we could take these off if we wanted to. Or you can take you can take this whole thing out and then take them off, but um, you do need to take this one, the one that holds the speedo cable. We do need to remove that. I'll show you. <sighs> so we're talking about this one here, 10 mil bolt. So basically, just loosen that up, and that then will enable that to come out. And we'll take this all the way out. Cool, so that just comes out like that. All right, so now all we've got left to remove these forks is these two bolts here on this side, obviously on the other side for the other one, and then we've got that bolt there to loosen this around here. And then once they're loosened, these will slide out. So obviously we've got to be very careful not to do it in such a way that then it just drops out. You can do whichever way, it doesn't matter. All right, so 14 mil socket on this. Basically, all we're doing is loosen it pretty much like that. Do the same for the other side. All right, guys, so we've loosened those two top clamps. Now I'm going to do um, this one here. So that's a 6 mil Allen wrench. Now this is where, this one's, as soon as I loosen this, this is then going to want to drop out. So we've got to make sure that we've got hold of that and not let it just drop on the ground. Cool. All right. I'm just putting my foot underneath that. All right, now that I've taken that, that part off, grab hold of this and make sure we don't lose it. Same deal with this, just loosen them. You don't have to take them all the way out. And that's it. Now we just wiggle that out. And hey presto, one fork. All right guys, are you hanging with me? All right, so what I've done now is I've got a nice clean towel. I've put that up there on the workbench. So now I've got these two things. I've got to take the gaiters off. So there's a steel clip there. Remove that whole thing off there. Down the bottom, you've got a plastic one and a metal one. Simply unscrew them, they come away, take this gator off, then clean it. So whether you use, whether you wash it, whether you use Kero, Degree, whatever it is, however you clean it, as long as it's clean and all the bits of dirt and craps off it, because we're going to open this up and we don't want any of the dirty stuff or anything dirt or gritty getting in there. So that's what I do anyway. Cool, I'll come back to you when I've got them sitting up here, all this taken off and cleaned up. All right, so that is it all done now. They're just going to be quickly washed up and I'll just show you out here. I'm putting all my bits that I'm taking off so I keep everything out of my way. All those bits there will all get washed up. You won't see it, but they'll get washed up and cleaned, ready for being put back on. Right here, guys, so I've got all the tubes all cleaned up. Now I've just got to take this off. 
Remember, don't put your head over it. This won't go shooting off, but um, depending, you know, everything's a little bit different. There will be pressure on it. But I remember the last time I did it, I was expecting it to go shooting off, but it didn't. It just kind of like went pop. There you go. So now is a good time to remember what went where. So that's going to slide down. So I've got the cap that has that washer. I have a washer next in line. There is the spacer which I had to cut to size because I changed the, the springs in here and I'll have to cut again because of the gold em, uh, em, emulators. <clears throat> Another washer. As you can see, I'm just putting them in, in the sequence. Because I'm stupid and I, I forget stuff. I'm hopeless. Now we just take the spring out. Oh, put that over there. Now, we should be able to just pour the rest of the oil out. Like that. So we'll let that continue to drain there. And basically do exactly the same thing for this one, but I won't show you because it's just wasting time. Now I thought I'd give you guys a bit of a close up. I'm seeing this. See that black showing through, that's the O-ring. Oh, and then go, there you go. Pop. Same deal. Washes. Spacer, washer, and then we've got, oh, come on. Sounds like a duck spewing. All right guys, just as a reference, so we've got cap, washer, spacer, washer, spring. That's it, and these springs, they're not progressive or anything like that. So it doesn't matter, they can go, you can't put them in the wrong way. All right guys, so the next job I've got to do is remove, there's a wire holding clip that holds the dust uh, cover on. I'm going to zoom in so that you can see what I'm talking about. Oh, too far. So yeah, you can just see that there. See that clip there? And it, it comes out like that a few times around. So it comes out there, there. Now I'm replacing these uh, dust caps so I don't have to worry about damaging it with this screwdriver while trying to get this off but I do have to be mindful of not hitting that or any of the metal stuff, especially that part there. That looks pretty easy.
Oops. There you go. Look at all the junk and crap in there. Alright, so pro tip, when you're taking out this uh, clip that holds the dust seal um, cover in there, that's what, it, that's what you're getting out, so it actually has that gap there. So I found it really easy to, I, on the second one, I tried, I was actually trying to pull this bit and it was just making it harder. Obviously you can do it, but I went and found this bit and started from there and then worked my way around. Really, really easy. So start at one of the ends. Cool. All right guys, so now I'm into unfamiliar territory. What we've got to do now is take the dampener rod out of this, uh, out of these. So on, this end here is a 8mm um, Allen key socket Duvalaki thing. On this in here, on the other end, is basically what it looks like is, is that. I believe a 30mm um, nut would fit in that. What I've done is I've gone to Bunnings and I've just got this box tubing. And this is um, 25 mil square tubing. So from outside to outside, 25 mils. And all we've got to do is slide that in there and just nuzzle it in, which is what we're going to do now. All right, so I'm just going to slide this in here till it stops. And then I've just got to wingle wangle it till it pops in. There you go. So that's now in. I can't turn that at all. So I know that that's locked in there. All right guys, just show you what I'm doing here. So I've put this pipe into uh, the vise. It's still dripping oil. Apparently these will bloody keep leaking all overnight. But, uh, and I've got that sat in there. So that's on there. You can't turn it. And jump up on this table and get onto that and see if we can loosen it. Oh, brilliant. Cool. Oh, well, that worked. I thought it wasn't gonna work there for a minute, but that's done the trick. Cool, so now I can take this out of that. Put that back over, I'll grab the other one, we'll do that one as well. All right, so the second one on. I'm a bit excited that it worked. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh. <clears throat> That's done too. Well, there you go guys, so just a 25 mil um, piece of uh, box tubing. It's about a metre long. Got it from Bunnings, an 8mm Allen key, and a hammer, a table, and a vise, and that came out way easier than what I expected. All right, let's get stuck into the next bit. All right, guys, so we just gotta take these um, out. I've actually put that pipe back in there just to hold it from spinning inside, because it was spinning. That's that one done. So yeah, I needed to leave that in there because the, um, while I was unscrewing that, it was turning inside. So you need to put that back in there while you, till you fully take it out. All right guys, so we've now got that out. Um, make a note, there's a copper washer. One side it all came out, on the other side the washer stayed in there. So just, yeah, make sure you don't lose that. <clears throat> now I haven't removed the dust seal. I don't think I need to because now we're gonna pull this apart. I don't think, oh hang on, no, actually we're going to pull that out, <laughs> cool so there you go, look at that, that is it, so there you go guys, that's the uh, the dampening rod that sits in there and I was saying about the, the socket so that's what we were putting that um, pipe was going into that, cool, alright so that's pretty easy, alright guys so I believe I should be able to just do 
Ah, oh, look at that. Easy as. Beautiful. Love it when it's easy. All right. Okay, so there's a close up of them coming out. All right, I'll set these up and we'll just see what's in there. All right, guys, I did a whoops, but I've, I've figured it out. Um, when, I put, when all this came out, uh, you can see, can you see that? So it's different ends. It's actually tapered on there. I looked down there and I went, oh yeah, I see that. And then I popped these out and they fell out, but I didn't know which way they were to sit in there. And I was having a look down here and it was like, ah, oh. but if you get that problem, grab your dampening stick, rod, <laughs> and it's the, the one where it bevels over, it goes there. And actually when you do it, it just seats on there. That's the way that it goes in. If you try and do it the opposite way, it's just, it's, it's not a neat fit. So there you go, I was saved by that one. So if you come across that, that's the way it goes. All right guys, so that is what it looks like when you pull it out. And this is what it looks like when I sort it all out. So, going from the top part, so I'll give you a bit of a stretch out like that. So that is that clip that holds the dust uh, cap seal on there. Then we've got the seal, the fork seal. Then there's a washer. Give you an angle like that for us. Then there is this band, and then here is this. So that obviously this pipe is recessed, and then they've got this that goes over it, and it just sits out a little bit so that when this comes down, it sits against that. Then your washer, then your seal, dust cap, and then that thing on there, the clip. Cool. So hopefully this is making all sense. And I, I do it I, the way I do it like this step by step and trying to explain stuff because I'm explaining it to myself. This is how I like to watch stuff, so I really get a full understanding of it. So now what I'm going to do is take those off. I won't bother taking this one off that band that's recessed in. All the other stuff I'm going to slide all that off, um, clean all this up, clean uh, this band, the washer, and obviously the seal and the seal cap will be thrown in the bin and then we'll slide all the new stuff on. Cool, and it looks as though uh, the seal cap, the new one, doesn't come with one of these clips. And this is all a bit kind of like, looks a little rusty and so I'm gonna have to do some clean up with that. So I don't know whether I'll get some sandpaper or something, something fine and just give that a good clean up and then make sure I put some grease or when it's in, um, just smear some grease around there just to, to keep that. I don't, I, that's my idea. All right, here we go, guys. So dust cap is coming off. The seal is coming off. Washer. And then that band. Cool. So I'm, I use Maxima um, contact cleaner. It just, it's really great stuff. You spray it on just like that and you can wipe it down. But basically, even if you just do that and leave it, that will just dissipate and leave no residue whatsoever on there. So what I'm gonna do is, can you see that guys? Just give this a bit of a clean up. Like that. This is the problem with, um, like I clean all this up and then I'll stick it down and I'll stick it straight back down into the dirt. All right, so that's nice and clean. I'll clean up uh, that washer and the band. Beautiful. This can slide back down on. Silky smooth. Beautiful. Right, yeah, guys. So, whew, this the, the hard part's going to be putting this thing together. But I wanted to show you this. When you go to clean this, you might be able to see that there is an uh, 
in there, just in there is a little crevice and there's a lot of, like I've been getting so much grit out of that. Like I've been spraying it and then you see all that grit coming out. And I mean, that's, look at that, look at that grit. That's where this comes in handy. I can just spray on that. Get a bit of force in there. All right, I'll do that, clean all these up. All right, guys, so I've got these cleaned up. Um, this is the one that actually the seal blew on. And this actually had a couple of spots in, in around there and there that had, I don't know, it looked like either calcium or um, what do you call it, uh, rust. I really had to gouge, I ended up, my nail was what really worked it off. Um, so I've got all that cleaned up now. So that's something to watch out for. Make sure you get that really good and cleaned up. Now we've got to do the reassemble bit and I've been looking on YouTube and nobody's showing me exactly how to bloody do it. It's driving me nuts. Um, so I'm going to come back to you and hopefully we'll be able to do it. All right, guys, so now grab our top part of the um, fork tube, get our dampening rod, put that in there. Just slide that down, give it a wiggle. So then that, so then that comes out. Now, this is the real tricky bit. So this plastic piece, and obviously it's got that curved bit there, so that's going to go on that way, so it sits in there. We're now going to put this into here. But what we're going to, what happens is this can move like that. We're not, a, we don't want this part to go in there because it gets stuck in there and then it bounds up this um, suspension, bloody the fork. So what we're going to do is, I think what I'm going to do is hold that like that. Grab this fork, stick that over like that. How am I going to do this? I'm going to have to lay this down. Or bring it around over. All right, so hopefully you can see that. So I'm going to grab this part. So I'll just bring this back out again. Oh, that came out. So this goes on here. And what we want to do is push this down, but without pushing that back like that. So that goes in. Like that. And then we want to put this in here. And hopefully, if I push that in like that, can, I, can you see that, guys? Yep. I keep pushing this in until it hits the. It's hitting that now. And I think what I've got to do is pick this up, turn it upside down. Oop, I'll turn it the right way up. All right. Oh. And now I want to screw this until it grabs hold of that dampening rod. Just keep screwing it until you reckon it's. It's not. No, still haven't got it. There you go, I've got it. So I, I'd let this slip, this slip down a little bit until I'd actually get it to go on. So that is now done. All right, so just continuing. I'm just going to keep. I'm going to snug this up until it takes it up. Yeah, so I think the inside's turning as well. So I get me special tool, which is that pipe. All right, guys, so it's, it's good to have an extra set of hands. So I had Nay holding that end. I was had this in the other end until we got it so that we knew that that tool was in there and locked on it and then when I was turning. So now I've got it snug tight. So now we're going to just try and tighten it right up. Jesus, that's just, yeah, tight as tight, isn't it? I'm guessing once it grabs, it's just done. Yeah, it's just... 
Is that me turning you? No. Oh, now you are. <clears throat> All right. So I reckon that should be pretty well right. You can take that out now. So if, we're, if we've got this right, this should run freely like that. If that plastic thing goes up in that, in that, into that uh, little spot that I showed you, apparently that will be bound up. So I think we've got that right, guys. All right, guys, so I've got the seal. I've put the little grease satchel that came with it, and it says to put around it on the inside. So now we just thread that over. My bar doesn't have any mix or anything in it. Um, some people talk about putting like thin plastic and then putting that over to get it down and then take the plastic out but uh, My bars don't have any mix so I can just put this straight over Slide that down into there so now what we've got to do is we've got to seat that in there and I've got to get I don't have a tool to do that most I'm going to have to get some um, PVC piping. So I'll come back to you. All right, guys. So I've gone to Bunnings and I've got a bit of PVC pipe. I've cut it to length, so it's I'm going to be able to bash on top of it. Now this is 40 mil pipe. You've got either choice of 40 or 50. 50 was just too big. This was just a fraction too small. So what I've done is I've put a slit all the way down, so that I'll be able to get that over the fork. Now I'm going to lube all this up. Um, I've, I've made sure there's no burrs or anything like that. It's all nice and smooth. Let's see how it goes. Rightio, so I've put fork, just some fork oil in there and all over this bar. Now I've got that way, so see if I can get this on. Oh, that was a little bit easier than I thought. So now, should be able to pick this up like this and just ram that down. <laughs> Here we go. It's not staying in there. Oh, there you go. Ah, and they they said you'd hear a particular sound when it was when it was on there, and you can hear that just a solid um, sound. Cool. So now. Best not to do do this when you've got. Um, PVC dust all over you. Your short look is on. I'm trying to find, uh, there should be somewhere a recess where the, um, when we put the dust cover on, then that little, that metal clip that we had, we should be able to clip it into there. So I reckon I can see that, or what I think it is. Let's see how far down it is. Cool. And it's still going up and down, so that's good. All right, so for the uh, the dust cap, so obviously that way is up. Oop. Straight over. That's gonna sit on there like that. So we've gotta pound this in, but a lot of people um, use the old one to go over the top and then pound on top of that. So that you don't wreck your seal. So I'm just going to do it without using the old one, see what happens. Oh yeah, that's going down. Reckon that, oh Jesus, I reckon that's looking pretty good. See that edge. I'm going to call that done. Rightio guys, so I've got this clip and it's it's a little cruddy. I've just tried to clean it up as much as I can. 
Um, so what I'm going to do, just get a little bit of grease and just cover that in it. It will most probably help with if, if it's you know rusting and stuff like that. It'll just stop that rust happening, hopefully stop it from happening more um, and little bits flaking off and then getting into the in under the seal. Prevention is better than cure. So they say. All right, so that's all covered up. It's got a coating of grease on it, basically. So we've got to whack that on. Rightio, guys, so I've got that clip in there. I'll just try and show you that clip in there. So you can see that there. It all looks the way it was before. It's going up and down, which is a good thing. So that's done, I'm gonna go and do this other one and then I'll come back to you. Rightio guys, so I've got the second one on. I'll tell you what, I've had to redo this uh, with the third time to get that this all done. I did it the first time and then when I put it all on, I didn't have that down far enough. So I actually had to redo taking all this apart, pulling it all apart. I did that again and then when I put the um, that one on, it still wasn't far enough down for that clip to slip in. So I did it the third time and made sure I got that. And I think when I did the first one, I was doing it in the air like that. The sec When I did the second time, I was actually had this on the ground and doing that. So the third time I did it, when I was pounding down, I was actually holding it. And that, don't know why, but that seems to have worked better. So now I've got that this, uh, that little clip thing goes into the little groove. Um, so yeah, you've just got to make sure you get that down far enough. If you don't get it down and you put your dust cap on, you've got to, unfortunately, don't try and gouge that cap off. Just undo all this again, pull it apart and redo it again. Um, and that way you'll get it done. So that's it, that's done. So now all we do is um, put the oil back in it. Now, I've, when I got these new springs, because mine's got different springs and stuff from the standard, so Vince Strand Motorcycles, he gave me a diagram, and he's told me to put um, 590 mils of oil. So I just pour nine, five, uh, 590 mils in there, put the spring in, put the spacers and washers, clamp it down, and that's it, and just whack it all back together. But I'm now putting in these gold valves so that's the next job check out the worldwide man cave shop it's where you international guys can buy our stickers and patches and bits and pieces if you want to help support the biker bits channel check out our patreon page and become part of the keep on riding crew prefer to leave us a tip no worries just do it at the man cave tip jar and don't forget leave us a message why not check out the Biker Bits Australia website? Got heaps of bloody cool products on there. Sorry, we don't do international delivery though. Just click on the show more, all that little triangle, and I'll show you all the info and links to all this stuff. Thanks guys. Now, this is the gold valve. So that's it. So that basically sits down the tube. Goes down there, plonk. And that sits on top of that dampening rod. And then the spring sits on top of on top of that. So really, it's quite a simple installation. There's no drilling holes or anything. That's with a DR, so that's on max the DR650. So very very simple. All I've got to do is work out the which we'll go through in a minute. Um, I've got to tune this. You can you tune. This is the beauty of this particular thing is you can put this in, go for a ride, test it, and go. Oh, I want it to be a little bit stiffer, or I want it to be a little bit um, you know softer. And then you take this, you know, it's a bit of a mucking around, but it, it means that you can actually do it. And then you just do it a couple of turns in either direction and then do the whole process and work out what best suits your riding um, ability. So with the DR, uh, uh, with their shocks, it's, it uses that damper thing. And basically the only way that you can um, change the suspension is either putting in heavier or lighter, you'd go heavier springs, which is what I've or, or which is what I've done. So do that or change the oil weight in there. So whether you go with a, a 10 weight, a 5 weight, a 30 weight, whichever way you want to go. Alright guys, so let me get organised and we'll get into it. 
Righto guys, so now we've got to uh, we've got to tune tune this. It's got a um, four mil Allen key head there. That's a nylock um, nut. Just back that off. And then this thing here, you see that that actually um, has a thread on it as well, and you can tighten that up. So what we've got to do to tune it is go back to zero, and zero is basically what we do is we get that so that's loose and then what we do is wind this on till it touches and I reckon that's if I go back a bit see that's loose wind it a couple so I reckon that there that that's touching from what the instructions say so now there's no marking on here. I'm going to put a, a mark so I know how many turns to do because it tells you in the instructions how many turns for what. All right, hang on. Rightio, so now what I'll do is I'll show you on here. If you can read, see that. It's telling you some if So you might be want to pause the, um, the screen. But basically, um, standard is two to three turns. Optional, zero to seven turns is as much as you can do it. And basically it says, spring preload for lighter riders or a plusher ride, four to five, uh, with two, sorry, two to three turns of valve spring preload for lighter riders or plush ride, four to five turns for um, firmer race orientated or aggressive riders. Now, I'm a fairly light rider. I mean, I'm 78 kilos, but I have a safari tank, so the big 30 litre, so there's a bit of weight sitting on there. And a lot of the riding that I do is I'm going camping, so I'm carrying weight with me. So I'm going to go with, I'm going to reckon four turns. We'll see what four turns does. Now, you'll note there, I've put a mark there. So that mark, as long as it gets to the top, so we're going to go that's one turn, two turns, three turns, and that'll be four turns. So it's ended up on there again. So now I can just, <clears throat> this nylock nut, I can now just tighten that down on there and that'll just stop stop that from accidentally backing away I'll make sure that that mark stays in the same place cool so there you go so I'll just take that out of there rub that bloody line off, doesn't really matter. And there you go, so that's preloaded to what I reckon I'm gonna use for, for me on my bike. Cool. I'll just do the other one, then I'll come back to you to the next bit. All right, so I've just had a bit of a shot with uh, putting that in there without, some. I've seen some people saying about doing it that way and then getting the fork and running it down over that. But I just tried whacking it in there, so I just stick that in there let it go down. It's actually gone straight into, into the spot before it was off a little bit and I just jiggled it around and it just sits in there. I'm gonna see if I can get you guys to have a look. Right, you should be able to see that hopefully. I if I do that. So yeah, you can see it just sitting straight down there. So if you see that, now I'm gonna try and plop this down and then hopefully, oh, let me get the torch. <clears throat> now you can see that that is off kilter. So all I've got to do is just jiggle it like that until, there you go. Beautiful. And hopefully, there you go, you can see it there, look at that, and it's just sitting in there perfectly. 
Right, so, now that that's in there, all you do is you get your spring, pop that in there, that is it. Um, pour your oil in, put your spacers and all your bits and pieces. Now obviously if you haven't had an emulator in there before, you're going to have to cut your space up because now it's sitting up too high. So basically, uh, if I get that back out, as I've said I've got to cut that distance from that edge to that edge off that spacer and that'll get me back to the way it was. Rightio guys, so I've now cut my spacers so they're now um, <clears throat> will fit perfectly with those gold emulators in there. So now all I've got to do is look at the instructions that uh, Vince from Vince Strand Motorcycles gave me. So when I first uh, just had the upgrade I didn't put the valves in straight away so I put 590 mils in each of the, the legs uh, but now he's also got a notation for me that with the t-valves in I only put 560 mils so that's making it really easy for me um, so that's it I just got to pour some of this in well, I reckon that's about close enough so that's it emulators popped in springs in top of that so now I'm just going to fill this up Should be able to see the oil in there. So now I should pump this up, but I've got to be careful that it doesn't overflow like it's bubbling up. And I'll just keep doing this. Oh, ah, you idiot. And be careful not to do that. <laughs> So now I'm going to guess how much I spilt. About that much. Cool, that's one done. All right guys, so second one. The dog's right between my legs, so if I spill any of this, it's going to go on its head. I can't even see it again. Beautiful. So again, I can see it, it's right up. And it's bubbling away. I'll just give it a bit of a pump. All right, now just tighten them up. Cool. Done. Now when they're uh, back in the bike and clamped in, I'll give that another, just make sure it is properly tight. Well, there you go guys, so that's it. I'm not gonna show you uh, me putting everything back together. Basically, that was the job that I wanted to show was putting those gold emulators in. It turned out to be a fairly simple job, much easier than doing the uh, replacement of those uh, fork seals, if you've seen that previous video. Um, yeah, so I don't think you'd need to watch me bloody putting it all back together. I mean, that's just, yeah. You should, if you're tackling something like this, you're going to know how to put it all back together. All right, I will come back with another video um, saying what I think, how those emulators have changed the characteristics of the bike. All right, guys, that's it. Keep on riding, and if you ain't riding, keep on keeping on.